What's going on AP students? In this video I'm going to share with you how to plan for a document-based question. This is a big deal essay. We're talking 25% of your overall AP exam score. Now, like with any essay, you have to go into this one with a game plan. And I want to share with you how to do that. So here's how to approach the DBQ. So starting off with seven documents, you'll be given pictures, quotes, political cartoons, data, you'll never really know what you're going to get with a DBQ, but the first thing that you need to be aware of is this. Once you get your seven documents, take about 15 minutes or so, approximately 15 minutes, maybe 20, to go in and read the documents first, beginning with the sourcing information. So step one, skim read the first uh, the first document beginning with the source line, and, then, and so there's your sourcing part of it. Begin with the year. I always tell my students start with the year. Um, number two, circle usable SFI, that's specific factual information or your key terms. So annotate these documents. Step three, record outside information relating the document in the margin. So if you're reading something, something comes to mind, make a note of it in the side of the margin. Step four, identify the premise of the document, the pros, the cons, the positives, and the negatives of it if you have the ability to do so. And then step five, identify and record a hippo use for the document. If you're unfamiliar with what that term means, please refer back to a video where I show you how to go about hippoing a document. Basically, it's an extended analysis. And if you notice in Doc 3 that it's pretty clear um, the author's point of view or the author's purpose, maybe mark it to the side and come back to that later when you start to go and present an extended analysis of that particular document. Remember, you have to do this for at least three documents. I would suggest doing HIPPO for four documents. So let's do some reminders here. You must correctly describe at least three of the seven documents. Additionally, you must use six of seven documents to support your thesis. I'm going to suggest to, for you to use all seven documents. I feel like all seven documents deserve something in an essay. Finally, you must present an extended analysis of at least three of the seven documents. So this is where HIPPO comes into play, where you're bringing in the historical context or the intended audience. Have to do that for three documents. I'm going to suggest four, just to have the insurance that you get the credit for that one point on the DBQ. Once you've done this, start thinking about coming up with three categories that you can go and take these documents and then begin placing them into. So think about which documents seem to go and work well with each other and I want to suggest to you come up with a 3-2-2 approach. Three documents being put into category one. Why three for that one? Why, that, why, why starting off with that many for that one? Um, that's your strongest paragraph. So think about grouping the documents. Which documents seem to oppose each other? Which ones work well with each other? And once you've done that, think about any sort of key terms you can add into category one, category two, and three, and, and start to write them in, in the box below as you start to develop what you're actually going to write with. Essentially what you're trying to do is have a very consistent argument throughout your entire essay. And you can do that if you have the 3 2, two approach where you're consistently using documents throughout your entire essay. So why don't we um, jam up category one with five documents? What's the problem with using too many documents? It can just make your argument confusing, can make the, the, that particular paragraph hard to understand or hard to read if you were to do something like that. You don't want to just simply make a list of documents in your essay. You don't want to just have every other sentence doc one and then doc two and then doc three. You want to make them interact with each other by grouping them. And you can do that if you take that 3-2-2 approach to your brainstorming as you begin to prepare for this essay. And then finally, once you've done all of these things, move on to your thesis statement and be aware of the time and how much time you've spent already on this essay. But if you can go ahead with this game plan, you'll be able to go in and hopefully write your essay without too many hang-ups. But move on to your thesis statement once you've done all these things. Um, although X, your counterpoint, your argument is Y because of reasons A, B, and C. And of course, category one will tie in with category A, and then category two ties in with B, and then C should line up with your category three as well. All right, always remember, 
you can have a really great essay if you go into this in, into it with a game plan and hopefully this will give you some help some kind of tips and tricks as you get ready to prepare for a document based question alright let me know if you still have questions thanks for watching